Fabian and Canadians 8 tips on how to get better as an individual and as a team player. The full episode of 6 on 6 can be found in the description of this video. Twitch clips will be followed up after each section. Handling or not handling a criticism. One of the best ways to improve at anything is to ask others to give you feedback on what you are doing wrong. If you cannot take criticism, you are choosing a way longer road to get better in this game. For an example, let's go to the clubhouse when defending CC and Cash. An attacker have opened the CC wall. You are playing at the top of the Cash stairs, and you keep dying from the bottom of the Cash stairs. Since you are dying, your Cash defense will easily collapse, and it's pretty much over. Also, on Consulate, you are IQ, and yet you have been opening death for your team in two rounds. Your teammates or analyst ran the numbers and told you that you must not be peeking or playing aggressive because, according to the imaginary stats, your console attacks are for some less efficient when IQ is dead first because no one can take care of the Volky cameras or Yokai drones when available. It is very hard to find out your bad habits and that is why you need to be open to criticism especially they are coming from the experienced people, no matter how they are formulated. Were they yelling at you? Usually they should not, or telling you the criticism in a normal matter. Accept them. If you think that they are wrong, discuss it. This doesn't just apply to you, this applies to the whole team. If just one of five of you is not taking the criticism, the person will drag the whole team down. Before the Fabian's Twitch clip, understanding what you did wrong is good, but not enough. Finding reasons why you held the more aggressive angle on the cash stairs is the most important thing. Let's see the clip. About the criticism of each other in a team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think that a reason a lot of tier 2 and tier 3 teams do not get further in their career as either individuals or as groups is because they do not know how to handle criticism. They don't take enough self-responsibility or accountability to their mistakes or to learning why they are making their mistakes. Yes. That's the biggest reason why I see a lot of very talented players not getting anywhere. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. And I, I think that comes back to the leadership thing too is there's not always players that are giving that criticism or at least not giving it in the right way um, to those players. Because I think... The next one is very similar to the previous one. And it is to be honest with yourself. This is also speaking from the private coach position or overall reading on the Reddit, Twitter, YouTube comments and so on. Let me give you an example on when you're not honest with yourself. You're being in the bronze and putting blames on your teammates. Another example is you understanding how to play on a certain objective. I have been asked a lot of times to make a tutorial of how to play the barbed wire. And let me ask you several questions. But let's go to the villa first. If you had two barbed wires left to spare and you want to put at least one barbed wire to cover up the engine of the games. For the sake of the question, let's assume that you're using the standard strats. Why is it recommended to put a barbed wire outside of the game's room, by the buff of the hallways? Not too far, but not too close. Another question, Oregon. When do you put a barbed wire here, and when on the bottom half? If you were in the, my Discord, you might know the answer, because we already had a discussion about the barbed wires there. But if you were struggling to answer these questions, and these are pretty basic questions. Do you even know how to use the secondary gadgets? Playing a strat, whether it to be a ranked default or more advanced, is not just placing a barbed wire on a fixed position. Playing a strat means playing around your utility. Based on the utility investment, you exactly know how to play your position. These are just basic ideas of being honest with yourself. This obviously applies to every team. As Canadian will say now. There's other teams that literally like they lie to themselves. Like they have weaknesses, obvious fucking weaknesses. And they, they literally are delusional or lying to themselves and telling them that they're not bad at that. Like you need to know what your what your weakness is. Like there are land there are teams that are weaker on land than online. And like <laughs> they're 
And they're literally, they, they just sit there and they're like, no, we're not. Yes, you are. Like, if I was on your team, I would literally be, like, I would, if I was on a team that was significantly weaker at land than online, I would literally sit there and tell the team, I'd be like, guys, we're on land compared to online. We need to figure this out. Like, this is a problem. Nobody should. There are certain situations when you need to take the responsibility at a time, even if it is not your fault. If you know that you will kill everything by discussing or even arguing over a bad callout, just say that it was your bad, even if it was not. Games can be pretty exhausting for the mentality, for you and for your team. If you are going to discuss further about the play, you will end up your game in a loss. This applies only in tournaments, in scrims or ranked, you should not take the responsibility of something that what is not your fault. If you were watching SI 2019 on G2 vs Empire, you will understand perfectly what Fabian will say next. And I know he's in blue bar, and Jonas calls, he's jumping out blue window, so I run out on hook a balcony to kill him before he's gonna run into pink. And he doesn't do that, that was a fake call, the guy C4 Snick from the rotation home. And it, it, it comes to that part where it's like, I just apologize so that we don't create a bad situation in the group. It's my fault, I'll take responsibility for it, let's just keep playing. We will be evolving now more into the team's tips and tricks. And we'll talk about the scrims. Check the description to find out what scrims actually are. In short, there are custom 5 vs 5 matches designed to practice a team's threat. Coordination, communication and similar things. This might sound obvious for everyone, but even if it is, most of the T4, T3, or I will even say T2 teams are not realizing this. Scrims are not meant to win. Scrims are meant to test your stuff and make it better. What does this mean? This means that it is totally okay to define dining and kitchen on Oregon six times in a row if needed. If you can adjust something, and you keep losing, force that side. You're playing the scream to develop better strats, not to win. The strats I have been making for this channel as well as any other strat can sound great on the papers, but when it comes to the practice, it can be a massive flop. Why? Because the strat is, as I said, not just placing utility, it is playing around it. This also means that if you had won SSG, or rogue in a scream, this means nothing. If you could not change anything in the strat during the scream, you lost around 3 hours of your time. Changing a strat can be changing just one barbed wire's position. Let's see Fabian's takes on this. One thing that I, I notice as well is that a lot of teams that are playing, they aren't playing to practice, they're playing to win. And that's something I still see today. I, I can't count how many times we lose a map in practice because I forced the same bomb site five times in a row just to freaking make it work. And it's like, okay, what is it we're doing wrong? Are we missing this rotation? Should we change the rotation to this side? Should we make shooting holes here? Should we do vertical holes here? What is it that we can change to make this work? Sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah, you're just losing your gunfights, but you can notice when you're losing your gunfights and your players can say when they're losing the gunfights. Other times it's the strat. And when it's for practice, you can just push it over and over and over and over again and you notice how some teams like, okay, we lost that bombsite, let's move on to the next. It's like, what are you uh -huh. doing? Yeah. Having said this, playing ranked or monkey play style in scrims continuously is not recommended. To spawn peak once or twice, it is okay, but you should not be doing it a lot. There are two reasons why. And let's say that you, as an attacker, kill the spawn peaker. Now it is 5 versus 4. If you win the round flawlessly, can you determine that the shot is good or not? No, you cannot. Because it was 5 versus 4. If you want to get better against the spawn peakers, you can always go play ranked. It is full of that. Screams are meant to practice specific things. And that is impossible if your opponents are not taking the scream seriously. Let's see the Canadian's perspective on this. Five people. Like, how, how are you going to know if the strat works if every round is odd numbers? You don't. So like that, that's like you can't improve like that. I feel like I I don't mind if you throw it in there like here and there. Sure, like throwing throwing some dumb aggression here and there. But every round like you're you're just not going to improve consistently. 
I mean, the time that you throw in the dumb aggression is when you're in a negative number situation. For example, three versus four, or four versus five, or two versus four. That's when you try the stupid stuff. Yes. Because that stupid stuff might grab you the round back. But you don't try it in the five versus five in practice every single time. I said two reasons. And yes, the other one is spawn picking is just the same as relying on the heads when tossing a coin. It sometimes will work, sometimes won't. That's not consistency. That's not how you are going to win the games. Having strats based on the spawn picks is not ideal, unless it's coastline. Here's another Canadian stake on that. He might not, but like either way, he would keep on trying to do it. And I'm just thinking in my head, I'm like, like how can they be happy with their team if they're playing with a guy who's like taking a fucking coin flip in the first 15 seconds of every round? Yeah. Because like half the, like half the time you're not playing a normal round. Yeah. More than half the time. What does that give in, exactly. in the terms of practice? Fucking nothing. Exactly. And that's where I have a problem with it, where it's like, how are you, you going to feel like you're improving at all? Because like, you're just, you don't, you don't... I have touched this one of the rank up videos, actually, when people are not taking roles seriously. However, we'll be talking here about having versus not having an IGL. If you don't have an IGL, you're not going to play structured. What does this mean? How many times when watching the league matches have you seen solo pushes through the office on the coastline? Whilst his teammates are opening the penthouse and the VIP holes to pressure the defenders. On the other hand, in the structured teams, you will see very similar play but Ash holding an angle from the outside office. It's pretty simple to see organized versus unorganized teams even in the league matches. Let's see Fabian's clip. Side because well that's what they saw and instead of having that and like just like oh we're just running our strat we may maybe take the opportunity but you see low amount of refrags you will see people playing a lot on their own a lot doing their own stuff completely away from the group and stuff like that it's i think it's very for me when i watch pro league and i watch it from a spectator view which i've been doing now for three months i can clearly see which teams are lacking leadership and which 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 teams aren't and it's night and day difference it's night and day difference it is very important when you have an IGL to respect him and trust him. IGL heavily depends on how much respected he is within the team. An IGL needs to give solutions to the given situation. Without his team trusting him, that is impossible. Let's go to Villa for a change. And let's say that you cannot deal with the mirror window from the trophy to the statuary. Therefore, IGL calls to push it vertically from the dining, kitchen or china. Basically, he wants to push out from the laundry toward the memorial and put a flank drone by the 90. Any defender that way will be seen with a drone and you can pop the mirror window from below. It is very important to know that IGL does not babysit. Let's see Canadian and Fabian's take on this. Clip and go on Reddit, but like, I genuinely feel like most pro teams don't actually have a real leader. They don't. Oh, they don't correct. have a real in-game leader. They, they call someone an in-game leader, and like between rounds, he says, okay, we're taking we're taking dining this round, and that's it. Yeah. But like, other than that, there it's not actual leadership. It isn't. Like, you can see them, like, they, like, the, the players don't have, like, the same respect for that guy. Like, the last thing that was touched on the 6 on the 6 episode was the wannabe coaches, just for the sake to be with their friends and doing nothing. You don't understand that if you're not doing anything for the team, you're dragging them all down. This is very important when the T3 teams are already established, like on EU, and coaches already can do a good amount of work. Not having a coach, or having a coach just for the sake to have a coach, could cost your standings. For the final clip, Fabian votes. In conclusion, I have also opened a Reddit post in my subreddit. In conclusion, I have also opened a reddit post in my subreddit and I got a good amount of replies there and I could already see few people being dishonest with themselves. For example, if your only issue is aim, then you will be already in the T2, T3 teams or at least in the diamond. You can be in the diamond with just fragging, but as well as with a huge map knowledge. Accept your mistakes and improve upon them. The more issues you realize you have, the more things you can work on. If your only mistake is to get a better mouse, 
then you won't be thinking about how to get better at understanding how to play the maps, operators or anything else. Thank you for watching this video and staying with me for this long and thanks all the patrons and YouTube members for making this video available. If you want to learn all the basics and advanced things about the siege, make sure to give me a like, subscribe and click notification bell to get all notifications on my channel. Make sure to give me feedback down in the comment section below.